But how about this lineup? Tyler Wright, number one in the world, will be in yellow. Stephanie Gilmore, the eight-time world champ, is going to be in the blue jersey, number six in the ranks. And Tatiana Weston-Webb, also number six on the CT rankings, will be in the white. Two years in a row now. One of the best products to come out of the USA in recent years as well. For me, this is important. This right-hander for Alyssa, I have yet to see her really produce a, a big number on the rights in my eyes. So let's see if she can do it now, because it's important. If she wants to get that heat win and move into the semis, this is the rights. That's what it comes down to for her. And working with Matt Myers, she has great technique, a lot of poise and composure as well. Great top turn right there from Spencer. A lot of speed down the line here. Up into the lip once more. That's more like it from Melissa. And that board is looking sharp as a knife right now. Woo. Down carve from the goofy footer from North County, San Diego. She's going to stall for the barrel. Oh. oh, and gets clipped right at the end. Yeah, that's been tough for her. That backhand barrel running at the end to finish it off. Hasn't quite gotten that technique right there at the small part of the barrel. And unfortunately, there he got it in the head. But good surfing before all that. I mean, look how this wave almost looks, uh, you know, like six inches bigger than we've seen on the rights, but solid maneuvers on the backhand. Such a graceful style. You can see she keeps that arm straight out for stability. Just now here, trying to figure out this barrel riding on the inside. She's going for the grab. She gets it, but doesn't twist as much as we've seen other competitors do. And just pulls up a little too high, gets the head in there, and realizing that moment, ouch. Mm -hmm. First wave of the event for her, riding a sharp eye under her feet. Seems like she's going to go for a PU design right here. Yeah, well, no, it's looked like uh, she's on the epoxies, actually. Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, she's got a couple different boards, but this one she's been practicing on and liking the feel. Well. Off to a decent start here is Tati. Nice snap there up into the lip line. Nothing major so far. That's more like it from Wesson Webb. The surfer from Kauai represents Brazil. Once again, I love the, the dynamics right there. She slides the fins afterwards into the lip line. That's a great combo for Wesson Webb. She's going to stall for the barrel. Great positioning. She's deep, deep and comes out. Tatiana Wesson Webb with a great performance here on her opening ride. Yeah, that was solid. Uh, the, you know, the, she needed to get the combos. She was having impact moments through the outside section, and then she got to that portion where it slowed up, and then she was able to put the string the three. Oh, Joe and Rosie bringing in the special guest right after this break. Don't go anywhere. It's the Surf Ranch Pro. Steph Gilmore, the best ever in the sport eight-time world champ ripping apart this right loves the barrel section maybe one of the best in the barrel on the right in history of this wave look at that stretching it out all the way through one of the longer tube rides to start gilmore was high-fiving everybody on the bow ramp she was really fired up big hook on the open face Throwing down the wrapping, cut back, and now slamming on the brakes again. Ultra deep on the end section. Gilmore looking for her final move. There's that famous down carb sweep with one of the best styles ever. Gilmore on the board and trying out some new equipment lately. The newer edition that she was thinking about riding on finals day, but brought it out early, Rosie. What'd you see here? Incredible performance from Steph. I get the strange impulse to clap when I watch <laughs> Steph on this wave. It's so insane. I mean, just the depth of this barrel and the way that she manages her speed and, and, and how deep she is and comes out with a lot of velocity as she attacks the lip. Um, the technique is just so superb. Obviously, growing up at Snapper, this feels right at home for her. And looking at the board under her feet, that swallowtail thruster, just able to hold that rail line for such a long time. So cool to watch her read and her first um, kind of bite at the apple here at the Surf Ranch Pro. Uh, this unbelievable technique. She knows how to manage her tube time with body positioning. But all the turns were brilliant. I think when she first came to the Surf Ranch in the older versions of the wave, when it was a barrel from start to finish, that's all she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. She was pulling in and just getting the longest tube rides imaginable. And then she adjusted to the CT3, which really allowed. 
Hydra Foil setting up for Alyssa Spencer, the wild card that turned into 4.67 earlier. Riding a 5-3 from Channel Islands. Representing San Diego, California. Love what she can do on her forehand on the left. Front side hooks are reliable. Nice point of difference being a goofy foot in the draw. Remember, all trying to avoid fourth place in the qualifying round. Alyssa driving off the bottom. Great connection there on that front side wrap. Hits it again. A lot of water heading to the sky. Little power jam in the pocket for Spencer. So far, so good. Time to get barreled. Spencer gets deep. Adjust her line to make it. And here comes the finish. Very impressive ride from the wild card. Finishing her opening run. You know what? Uh, Alyssa on her forehand on this wave, it's just that flow that she finds. I mean, this is, would only be a handful of times that she surfed this wave, but it's an instant connection for her. I mean, growing up at Seaside Reef, she's obviously favored her forehand for a long time. Beautiful barrel ride here on this inside section. So just a good, natural um, expression of her surfing. Really impressed with the combination she was able to do here. Comes out of the barrel and is able to hook it under that lip and, and really throw a lot of spray. And then winding up out of the barrel. This is my favorite part to see what they're going to do. Do they have any energy left? And she had a ton of it. Around a lot of the big things, but there is such a great benefit you know, to a pro surfer doing that. Because again, think about it. Jal Shienko and Molly Picklum would not be you know, on tour right now. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to catch up with Elo, our CEO of the WSL, as we watch world number one, Tyler Wright, getting started with some big turns down the barrel, completely disappeared for a moment. Backed up for title this year at Bells Beach, going back to back at that prestigious venue. Throwing down that nice clean re-entry. Nice pace for Tyler. Missed a few events here with some injuries in the past, but happy to be back. Now, two time for Tyler Wright. Comes out flying with some speed, and Tyler lays it down. Well executed opening ride for Tyler Wright. And just so cool to see her back in yellow as we go back to the replay row. Yeah, Tyler just finding her flow, finding her rhythm on this first wave. Love the way she tucks into this barrel, disappears there. That depth is going to be taken into consideration by the judges. Just watch the, the, the shuffling of the feet. That's always so interesting to me. It's just the way that these surfers are kind of placing their weight backwards and forwards on their surfboard to find that sweet spot when they head into their turns or pull into the barrel. Just so intricate, just the way that they shuffle those feet forward when they're in that barrel, really using those, those arms and the leverage that they have in their weight to control their speed and maintain their positioning in the, in the wave. It's so much balance that comes into riding that close in that little cupped out section. I like that. I was just staring at her footwork after you said that, Rosie, and she slid her foot back to the traction pad. And a grab rail. Ro Rosie, Taylor always loves switching up with a grab rail turn. Yeah, and it's interesting because you can watch a grab rail and you can go for it. Counting one wave to try to get a shot in the finals day. If you're in that ninth session, that means you're getting second or third in the qualifying round today. So far, Gilmore looking smooth on the left. This has always been the area she's identified there. She wants improvement on her backhand. But she's been looking great the last couple of days. Goes straight up on that section. Looks like she's in more of attack mode now. Getting some space off the white water and pushing harder off the coping that time. So really not running away from the pocket here. Steph keeping it really controlled. Right in the critical part of the wave. Now she'll get sucked into the tube and she will come out. Gilmore's gonna wrap it shut. Great execution. One of the better lefts I've seen from her in her opening rounds over the years. Sometimes she's gotta build and warm up to it. Not this time, Rosie. Waiting for numbers from the left of Stephanie Gilmore's qualifying round. Heat number two continues and will continue our conversation with Eric Logan. We'll be right back. As we get right back into this one, Tatiana Weston-Webb already threw down a seven. 
representing Brazil, raised on the island of Kauai. Throws down the vertical. Staying nice and low. How's that backhand tube approach? He's been improving on that every single year. Right into a beautiful backside snap. Couldn't have been more perfectly placed. Going down a nice tight jam. Tati whips it off the lip again. Had a subtle injury at Bells, but not showing any signs of nursing that knee these days. Ooh. Drops down to a low road, which made Elo panic for a second, and then she will recover for that snap and a little bonus. And now feeling the leg burn. That tube section can play some tricks on you down on the inside, Elo. You know very uh, well. Yeah, that was good. That was a great recovery. She did so well on this wave. I mean, just watching her attack. And like you said, she was kind of nursing a little bit of an injury off the bells, but she's looking fresh legs, fresh perspective, reinvigorated for the back end of of the championship tour wants to make that final five. She's just underneath sitting in sixth place position. Um, just Tati is always on the attack. I feel like she's always just right there in that top third of the way, able to go vertical. Right there, she burns off that speed, gets super deep. She's kind of riding that foam ball and she gets almost toppled over. Let's watch what happens right here. So she's got such a good read on it. She's repositioning those legs, that back leg. She's kind of dragging that butt in the wall. That's where she almost kind of loses it right there. Good composure. Just I love the slow-mo because that just shows you just all the hard work that they're doing that maybe you'll miss on, on real time. There's so many subtle things happening. Yeah, and really appreciate moments. that recovery, Rosie. That was brilliant. Just that little rail just changing pace. And it's such a small area in that tube. There's so much time to get sucked up and over the falls that happens a lot on that barrel especially backside tati celebrating that finish i mean it did that one kind of picked up a little bit as the afternoon wore on and that kind of got that land breeze going as the sun really came out and started to heat things up now tyler getting to work on the back end dominant season so far this year very consistent back-to-back -back finals through the Australian leg, including that win at Bells. This one, she's going to sit down for just a second, just trying to catch up to some clear water here. So a little downtime. Just want to see some more activity. We'll see Tyler pick up the pace here. All set up work, and now barrel hunting. Tyler puts her head down. Not too deep, and she'll set up her final turn. It's a roundhouse cutback with the rebound. So chasing a 4.34. And we'll see how close she gets to that number. She doesn't really find that opportunity to, to get vertical on this wave. Just going, kind of going through the motions. Obviously completing her ride, and that's going to be a good base point for her as she heads into that second round of waves. Definitely just something, something a little bit off for me with this wave for Tyler. Just there wasn't that same, that usual approach of her just attacking. With that spontaneity that we're so used to from Tyler and creativity. Alyssa Spencer getting excited for run number two, Rosie. Alyssa's going to get this one going down the line. Little bottom turn to snap off the top. Love that we have representation from San Diego here at this event. Driving hard off the bottom. There's a nice clean paced re-entry on the back end. Riding boards from Channel Islands as well. Attacking the lip. Back end is so solid. Her technique is incredible. You can always see that back arm leading every single maneuver. And now waiting for a little backhand to Bride. A little bit out in front. She misses the pit. But she'll shut it down with a nice vertical hack and a bonus second effort. So since we already saw Alyssa's opening right, it was a 4.67. We just know that is the number she's trying to improve on. Now, Tatiana Weston-Webb. 
having her chance to get things going with that wrapping turn. Plenty of pace off the bottom and now jamming it nice and tight in the pocket. She has a 7 and a 7.5. Already had the heat lead after the opening run. And the Brazilian knifing the whitewater section. Throwing down a beautiful wrapping turn. Tail slide on the open face and now time to get barreled. Weston Webb completely disappears. Maxes out the tube time and just kind of chips that end section. She's feeling great today. So, so good to see Sati start to open up. Run for it. This wave right here was so well read. Um, I'm loving like the subtle difference that I'm seeing here in the left um, today is just that section right there has become a lot more playful, this midsection of the wave. It seems like it's kind of slowed down a little bit and there's that two-turn option that you get in the middle of the left that's really become a fun little staple for the guys to play with and really drift the fins and get a little bit creative. That, that third option was pretty cool too. Barrel. Pretty deep there, Joey. Disappears from view. And then has the last little bit of juice in the legs to go for the layback. Almost lays it on the rail the whole way. Got a, a little bit flat there, but Tati just a completed ride. 817 is what she's trying to better. Good man, Mitch. You're in some good company there. Number one on the this the CT Shaper rankings. There's this white version that DH was telling me about. This is the newer board that she brought here to the surf ranch, and it looks really spicy. A little bit longer than that board she rode at Snapper. Always loves the two times. Stephanie Gilmore, the eight time world champ, really ripping that carve off the top. Looking really engaged now. She drills it right in the pocket, right back to the lip again, and moving quickly through her turns. Gilmore looks inspired, blows the fins out, recovers without a problem, and now sitting deep on the inside cave. Gilmore reaches for the exit and lays down a grabra where she gets stuck. That was an exciting ride, just missed the finish, but she looks incredibly fired up. Just gonna send it back to Mitch and DH so they can break this one down. Oh, look, she was very close, you know, she knew that, you know, it's a, a big score, the 817 to beat, and everything was going quite good. She had to go for it at the end and, you know, it didn't come off, but um, an 817's a keeper. This will go close, but I'll probably not as much, but. You know, the next wave's the most important one for her, the left. We all know that she, she's not the best in the world on the left-handers, um, but, you know, she's been working really hard, and this swallow tail has a little bit more bite. And should, you know, if she doesn't get too much wind on this next left, I think we'll really see her um, push that score a little bit more. So why the exact um, reason into using swallow tails here rather than a round tail or, or a squash? Uh, the big thing for swallows is they give you a lot more drive off the bottom and if you can get that board in the right they talk about who had team riders first you know who came out with certain designs before they did is that a copy of mine <laughs> oh it's all time as we look at Alyssa spencer getting started here rosie yeah Alyssa's got some some you know she's got a good score on that forehand but she's looking even spicier on the second attempt and now getting some flow down the line here, setting up crushing little hack there. She's got a really cool way of hitting the lip at this wave. Wow, how about that turn as well? Just hits it and times it so well. Puts a little bit of extra once she meets the lip line. And now flowing back into the pocket, pulling into the inside section, not super deep. And then she'll just seal the deal with a nice clean forehand snap. Alyssa Spencer, the wild card, getting the call up, is taking advantage of her time here in Lemoore. We'll give you the update on all the numbers here in the second heat of the qualifying round for the women. We'll be right back. Her high score in the first run was a 6-3-3 on the right. So the requirement once she goes left will change. It's all about just improving on her right score here. 
Tyler, a couple of big turns off the lip. Pulls in. The entire Wright family loves to get barreled. And a beautiful retirement party at Bells for big brother Owen. And she is fighting for a third world title this year. Looks like she's opened up a bit further on this one. Some nice energy out of that hook from Tyler. Now a nice casual way to pull into the pit. Tyler gets barreled and end section approaching. Lays into it but can't hang on. Unfortunately didn't get that finish but still good work done. I like that little barrel section that she was able to spend some time traveling through. Definitely look more engaged on this wave and it's funny because you can see the surfers they kind of have that game plan. They set that first foundation of their first couple rides. They set in some solid scores and then they really go out and try and improve it and Tyler being the first seed, she had the luxury of being able to watch everyone's scores drop in and recognize how she needed to tweak her surfing coming into this last, these last two waves for her. And that really was super unfortunate that she went down on that turn. So it's kind of fun thing to remember. She's actually going for a ninth world title this year. Wow. <laughs> Still getting used to that number eight. <laughs> Gilmore on the back end. She's always so critical of her back end, but she's won events like down in Peru where Rosie was as well back in the day competing. And there's that stumble. So the left continues to give Gilmore a little bit of trouble. Yeah, so Steph, like locking in these second opportunities, she's trying everything. I mean, the 7.77 that she's looking to improve upon, she's really got to look alive on these sections it was pretty funny because it started off she was looking so engaged in the wave that turn was just beautiful dropping out of the sky she gets just that split second where she gets left behind and that wave tickles at her heels and that's as we watch Tati set up the back end winning events like Margaret River finaling at Bells early in her career. She's got a ability to knife it, but she's looking real loose with it now. When she gets to the lip, she can just hammer it and ditch the fins, and how about that? I'm loving to see the way she approaches these backhand tubes, Strider. Yeah, that was just threading a needle. I mean, she just buckets out the back, the knife right through hot butter, and then right into the bowl. I mean, look at those verticals she's throwing up there. I don't, there's not, you know, that backhand is just unbelievable. She, right before she paddled out, she said, I love getting barrel backside. Oh, that lip took her out right there. That is a violent eruption right there. That was not fun to feel on your head, but Tatiana looking amazing up until that point. A young woman that are participating in the Rising Tides coming up later this evening. Man, she's so good in the barrel on her back end. No wonder she loves it. Her technique is just impeccable. And obviously, she's had a couple chances here at the surf ranch. But yeah, just a little bit missed time. We saw John go through this pressure earlier today where it came down to his final wave. Tyler feeling it now. Throwing down her first backside snap. Hits it harder on the second effort. Rips it off the lip, coming down in a critical part of the wave. She's got to lay low, but this is going to push her behind. Tyler right in trouble. She goes down and will be knocked out of the contest, losing world number one here at stop number six. On, on this ride, started off really strong and, and just gets caught behind him. We've been talking about it all day, how difficult it is to come around that section. Once you do that little bit of a misstep, it's nearly impossible. Nine times out of ten, you're not making it around. Tough moment for Tyler Wright. Her turns to start look brilliant. But as soon as that lip is breaking on your heels, Rosie, especially backside, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, it's pushing you towards that kind of flush out basin area. So it's really tricky to make your own speed. Still will have a great position in the WSL Final Five, but will she hang on to the yellow jersey? Will Keep you guys posted on that. And great job for a wild card. Alyssa Spencer will get another shot under the lights tonight with Steph Gilmore.
And Tatiana Weston Webb moves straight to finals day, guaranteed at least an equal third place position.